Good evening. I'm Pastor Rusty. This is uh, going to be our Wednesday night gathering. We're going to do it via internet again as we have the last couple weeks. Um, I'm outside in this glorious day. My neighbors are out and about. And um, let's talk about the Lord for a few minutes. I pray that you're home and that you're well and that um, you're feeling safe and that you're feeling empowered in the Lord. If not, I have a few verses for us tonight to kind of encourage us and, and give us maybe the thing that we need to get through this next little bit of time. I just heard the governor talk and we've lost quite a few more and quite a few more have been infected. So you keep praying. Keep praying for those that are infected and pray for those that um, don't have it yet that they'll stay safe as we go, have to go about our daily lives. Let me read a passage of, of scripture from 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their conscience is dead. I hear this verse quoted a lot these days, and everybody's running around like Chicken Little with their hands over their head, hollering, pandemic, it's the end of the world, you know, everything's getting ready to end. you got to remember that First John tells us the last days began when John was alive. So we're still in the last days. Um, the Bible never tells us about the last of the last days. Listen to what Paul said before that. He said, I am writing these things to you now, even though I hope to be with you soon, so that if I am delayed, you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Then he goes on and he says this poem that they had in the first century. Without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in a human body, was vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels and announced to the nations. He was believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. So Paul precedes this chapter. Then he goes on and says, They will say it's wrong to be married and wrong to eat certain foods, but God created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. Since everything God created is good, we should not reject it, but if it's received with thanks, for we know it is made acceptable, for it's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you explain these things to the brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be a good, worthy servant of Jesus Christ, one who is nourished by the message of faith and good teaching that you have followed. He says, do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is better, for promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle, for our hope is in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially those of the household of faith. Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. Do not let anyone think less of you because of your young age. Be an example to all believers in what you say and in the way that you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scripture to the church. Encourage the believers in teaching them. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your tasks so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those that hear you. So here we have one of Paul's final letters to his, his young protege, Timothy, a guy that that he had seen come to faith and he had been a part of his raising and his training and and here Timothy was pastoring probably pastor at the church at Ephesus had a lot of trouble in Ephesus with lots of things that went on around them and lots of lots of ancient cultic practices and those things but but Paul's trying to encourage young pastor Timothy and so we get to read kind of a private email here that Paul sent to Timothy so so that he could look into these things and encourage Timothy where he was at Timothy was a young man probably in his 30s and well the older teachers just kind of rejected him some of the older members in the area didn't want to recognize him as a teacher because of his youth but God, Paul had some very specific things to say to Timothy he wanted him first of all to train listen to what he says again he says do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives tales instead train yourself to be godly that's an interesting thing that Paul's telling Timothy that while he's growing while he's serving and while he's pastoring, that he should train himself. You know, that word for train there is the same kind of word they use in the gymnasium, those that would train for the Olympics, those that would train to be the best at their sport. And so Paul's telling Timothy, you should train, you should work out, you should exercise your spiritual gift. You should, you should be involved in growing every single day. One of the things that I find 
oh, probably disheartening would be a good word, about a lot of Christians that I've known, that I've met, is that they kind of got saved, they've walked out, they got baptized, and they started teaching Sunday school, and that's just kind of where they parked it. And they've kind of just coasted there for 10, 20, 30, 40 years at times, and they haven't really grown in any depth. They've taken the quarterly, and they've read it, and look, look through it and prepare for a Sunday school lesson, but they didn't have any personal study time in this stuff. They didn't challenge themselves theologically. They didn't know why they believe what they believe. I'm one of those kind of people, I don't care what you believe, if you know why you believe it, at least we can then have a discussion. But if you only believe because Papa Pastor used to teach it, then, then you don't have any depth of root. And, and when troubles like we're in right now come along, you get blown over. So the first thing Paul told Timothy is train yourself. If I can get there on time, I'm going to get there. But if I don't get there, you make sure you keep training yourself in the doctrine that is Christianity. So, so Paul, first thing he told him, he said, train yourself. And then look what he says in verse 11. He says, teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. So it wasn't just for Pastor Timothy to learn and for Pastor Timothy to grow. It was also so that he would teach everybody under his pastor and, and involved in that church. He was to continue teaching them. And I love the wording of, of the translation I'm using. I insist that they learn it. That's why we pastors, and you see pastors now all over Facebook and YouTube and everything else, that's why you see us challenging and, and pushing people. And, and when, when, when people have a complaint, you'll, you'll maybe see us pipe in and say, hey, is this the way a Christian should react? Is this something in your understanding of Christianity? And a lot of people, they don't have any more than that. They just spout off everything they've already heard. They, they live their whole life in, in Facebook memes just repeating what everybody else is saying. But but Paul told Timothy to, to teach. He told him to train, and then he told him to teach. You know, that's where we're at right now. We've been deployed. We're supposed to go out and be salt and be light, even in the bad times. We shouldn't be rejoicing that it's, oh, it's the end of the world, and you're getting ready to go to hell and burn and fry like bacon. That's not, that's not the Christian message. The Christian message is that Jesus came for you, and he also taught us to be like him. And that's what Paul's telling Timothy. Be about discipleship. Train yourself and then train others. And then look at one, one final thing he says there. He says, don't neglect your spiritual gifts. I like that. He said, stir that thing up. Just like you would those coals that are going out in a fire by a campsite and it's getting real cool and, and all you see is the ash. Stir them up. Blow on them. Add a little, a little wood to the fire. Next thing you know, it rages back up again. We're in a chance right now to stir up our spiritual gifts. We're, we're in a chance right now that we can go out and we can take the teaching and the training that we received and, and we can go out and, and be ministers. We can be salt and be light to everybody we meet. We can let people know what Christ has done and is doing for us. Listen to what he says. He said, teach these things. Don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. Be an example. Don't neglect the spiritual gift in verse 14. He said, throw yourself, throw yourself into these teachings. He says, give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those with you. So you see the importance of, of people living fulfilled lives in Christ. The importance of, of people coming to know Christ as their personal Savior. The importance of, of us living in a godly way so that those can see what godliness, true godliness actually looks like. You know, that doesn't mean we don't make mistakes, but it means we say, I'm sorry. I've always said that in Christianity, they're, they're bookends. I'm sorry and I forgive you. They go together. They're both taught in the scripture. We should be, we should never be so prideful that we can't say, I'm sorry. And we should never be so arrogant that we can't say, I forgive you because we've been forgiven much, haven't we? And that's our message is that Christ came to forgive, not to condemn, but to forgive. And so as we take this message out, Paul told Timothy, throw yourself into it. Make that your focus. Make that your livelihood. When, when you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, your whole day should have been invested in and focusing on what Christ is doing in you and through you and the effect it's having on others. You know, I think if we live that way today, you and I, if we, if we would make that our task, as I've been saying in our morning, morning inspos, that this is something you can do today. Well, this is something you can do tonight. Train yourself in godliness. Teach those around you what it means to be godly and throw yourself into the task. And I think you're going to see 
that no matter the situation, no matter what we're facing, Paul told Timothy, in the last days, you will see these things. You're going to see this and you're going to see that and, and all this is going to be happening. And they were living in the last days and so many tragic things have happened in, in the culture since this time. I mean, we're considering back in the middle of the first century when this was written. Well, people are still people, aren't they? They still need Jesus. And if we're not the light, and if we're not the salt, how are they ever going to be thirsty for Jesus? I hope this has blessed you this evening. Remember those on our prayer list. Pray for those that are in their homes that can't get out. Pray that the Lord would speak to them, that he would encourage them, and give them the guidance that they need to, to continue trusting and reaching for Jesus. There are a lot that are locked in their homes, and they're, they're letting their minds run away from them, and they're, they're letting the solitude and the loneliness creep in on them. Pray for those people. Pray that they would learn to cultivate a sense of security in the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for those that are sick. Pray for those that are hurting. And pray for the church as we go and as we grow. We, I've added a YouTube channel. All of my preaching and teaching and, and morning inspos, those are all on this YouTube channel. You can just look up Rusty Fitzpatrick. You'll find me. All my videos are there. I put them all up on the website. Tell people about our website. Tell people about our Facebook broadcast. And, and as we close here this evening in, in a word of prayer, remember each other. Although we can't be physically close to one another right now, we are spiritually knitted together as the body of Christ. And that's his intention. Whether close or far, we're one in Christ. Because Paul says, I'm there with you, Timothy. I'll get there as soon as I can. But if I don't, I've got words of encouragement. And I hope these words have been encouraging. Let's pray. Father God, tonight in Jesus' most powerful name, we come as a, as a, a body of believers that are gathered electronically, Lord. But that doesn't stop you. That doesn't make you any weaker. That doesn't make our prayers any less effective, Father. And as we bind together as the church, the church of the living Jesus in this holy week as we as we come to, towards uh, Good Friday and as we head towards Easter. Father, we're not going to be able to be together this Easter, but help us to realize the true meaning of Easter is not the brand new clothes. It's not the Easter eggs. It's not dinner at Grandma's house. It's the fact that Jesus Christ is the living Savior. He's a, he's, he borrowed that tomb. He got up from that tomb, and he'll never need another tomb. So, Father, we, we have that hope that's in Jesus. And I pray that the people that are hearing this and listening to this and seeing this will feel your presence in their life. Father, I can do nothing but point my way to you. And, Father, I pray that others find you through this. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.